For the white folks who love to claim that all we have to do is follow the law and work hard, I humbly welcome you to the third funeral being held for yet another stupid theory you gaslight my people with on a daily basis instead of having the heart to admit you were wrong. Part 3 Introducing to you the New York City Draft Riot in 1863. Not only is this yet another example of white envy, but also one of white projection and cowardice as well. Let's break that down. This massacre partially started because white people feared the emancipation of the black people that were still enslaved in the South, because they relied on them to be strike breakers when the white men that refused to go to work, refused to go to work. For those that do not know, strike breakers are black people that they would force to continue working when everyone else went on strikes so that way their businesses didn't have to close down. A moment of silence for the right wingers that talk all that shit about this generation for us refusing to work for less than we know we are worth. Argue with your ancestors, not with me. This massacre also started partially because of the poor white people's discontent with the inequities of the first federally mandated conscription. And they were afraid of fighting in the Civil War, but were now being forced by the Confederacy to fight due to the new draft laws. And they felt it unfair that the rich white people could just substitute themselves with their slaves and force them to take their place in the war. Another moment of silence for the white people that love to claim that black people voluntarily fought on the side of the Confederates. Even though black people had absolutely nothing to do with these decisions, the poor white people immediately began targeting them. Thus, the white rioters eventually turned their wrath on the homes and businesses of innocent African Americans and anything else symbolic of their growing political, economic, and social power. Another moment of silence for the false comparisons that white people constantly make, saying that they've never rioted in the first place, and so we should just calmly protest. Estimates vary greatly on the amount of black lives lost over the course of the four-day massacre. The minimum being 115 unalived, along with nearly a dozen black men who were lynched after being brutally beaten and tortured. Hundreds of black-owned buildings were destroyed, causing millions of dollars in damage. Up to 50 of those buildings were burned to the ground, including the Colored Orphan Asylum, which at the time housed 230 black children. This four-day draft riot finally stopped by police cooperating with the 7th New York Regiment. Stick around for part four of pink people claiming that all we have to do is follow the laws and work as hard as we can and everything will be all right, but lying through their teeth. Deuces.